Um, Welcome to Right on the Mark with your host, Mark. Wait a minute. This isn't Mark. I uh, have been asked to play the special guest host today because Mark's sort of feeling under the weather today. So uh, he asked if I would fill in for him, which um, I'm not really too sure about. I um, was having a hard time coming up with a topic today, and some suggestions that were thrown out there were, why don't I talk about me? Um, I'm not really too comfortable talking about me because I always think to myself, who's going to really be interested in what I have to say? Um, You know, um, I don't think that my life is all that interesting that everybody would want to listen to what I have to say. Um, Mark thought that I should possibly talk about, um, you know, my, uh, what I use to, what I do every day to get ready for work or my makeup routine or my uh, uh, face cleansing routine or something like that. And uh, see, I think that's a little bit boring. I don't know if everybody would be really be interested in uh, what I do uh, every day as far as getting up, getting ready to go to work, uh, what I do in my spare time, which is very limited. But uh, I just think that it's easier to um, talk about other people rather than talk about myself. But uh I think that everybody who is probably, I don't want to sound like that Mark doesn't have a lot of listeners, but everybody who's on this podcast, listening to this podcast, pretty much has known me for either all of my life or a good majority of my life. Uh, And that, you know, you probably already know everything about me. So when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, possibly I should talk about myself in a way that I think that other people see me and uh, to think about uh, the, the way the what the way they see me and what really is the truth. So today I'm going to talk about some misconceptions I believe about me that I think that other people think of me and it's not necessarily really who I am on the inside. I know that um, a lot of people at work, uh, they always think that I have it all together and that I am um, a never unse- insecure or unsure about myself. And uh, I don't believe that that's always true. I think that that's the face that I put out there for everybody. But in reality, I don't see myself as that person. Uh, if you lived with me, if you live with me, uh, meaning my husband and two sons now in my adult life, um, I do don't think that they would think that about me either. I do lose control sometimes. And uh, I don't have it all together all the time. I do question myself, but I think everybody does that naturally. I have a lot of um, things that I think that I could do better. And I'm always trying to do that. When I'm at work, I do try to put on that persona that I have it all together, uh, just so that everybody things that I do. I, you know, inside, though, a lot of times I I'm freaking out, you know, I don't, I don't always have it all together. Um, I try to do too many things at one time, I think that I spread myself too thin sometimes. And while I try to keep it all together, I don't really have it all together. Um, I think that that's a good, good way to present yourself. I know that I I think that my younger son, Logan, I think that he does that too, because to me, he always seems like he has it together. You know, he'll be getting ready to do a presentation uh, and he uh, doesn't even seem nervous at all. Meanwhile, I would be a bundle of nerves and I would, uh, you know, always be fretting that I'm not doing it properly. 
So I think that he has that same concept and I, I'm not sure. I think that maybe he feels the same way sometimes that, you know, he internalizes all of those feelings. So if you are out there and you think that I'm the type of person that has it all together, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I, th- I must be doing a really good acting job because I don't always have it good together. Uh, another thing that I think that a lot of people think about me is that I always wanted to be an attorney. Um, those of you that know me know that I'm an attorney. I work, um, in downtown Pittsburgh for a now a national, um, law firm. Uh, we have offices all, all across the United States. Uh, I work out of the Pittsburgh office. I'm lucky because the job that I do, I don't go into court. I don't do a lot of, um, you know, hearings and things like that. It's not that type. I'm not a litigator. I'm not somebody you see on Law and Order. Um, although that was one of the reasons why I went to law school. I thought that that would be really uh, a, a good career to have. I'm glad that I don't do that now because I had a little taste of what the law firm atmosphere and the courts were like because prior to going to law school, I was worked as paralegal for 13 years and I did work in a litigation atmosphere. So I worked with putting trial booklets together and getting the attorneys all prepared for trial. And when I was in law school, I always thought that that's what I would do. I would be a litigator. Uh, When I got out, I actually work in government compliance. Uh, It's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of, um, we do have deadlines that we have to meet, uh, but it's not as uh, strict as the uh, the court system. So it is a little bit laid back. I do get to work from home a lot, which is very nice, but I do have a lot of work to do. So working from home is a benefit because I can focus and, and not be distracted by just the day-to-day office, should I say antics? <laughs> um, so it's, it is a good Uh, it's a good job to have uh, for not having a lot of uh, deadlines and pressures as far as, you know, uh, totally blowing a case. I'm I'm not under that type of pressure. Um, But law is not something that I really always wanted to get into. When I was younger, I was very, uh, I, I was actually pretty good. I was a pretty good student all around. I uh, was in, I did really well in math and science. Those were two of my favorite subjects. So I always sort of thought that I would go into pharmacy, which is ironic considering that's what Mark went into. Um, I think I used the word ironic correctly. If Logan was here, he would help me out with that. But um, I I think that, you know, I, I always thought that I would go into some type of uh, something like that, science related. Um, I thought about going into chemistry. You know, when you're young, you don't know how to apply all of your uh, areas of likes. And so I wasn't sure what I would do as a chemist. Or um, I know that my mom was always worried about me becoming a pharmacist because at that time, really only the pharmacies were standalone pharmacies. And, you know, she was just concerned about somebody coming into the pharmacy and, you know, holding up the pharmacy and, and you know, that, that I would be sort of in harm's way for being a pharmacist, uh, having access to all the drug so, um, I, you know, I thought about that too. I'm, I'm not a risk taker at all. So, um, I, I sort of thought differently. And then when I was in, I want to say, I think it was either 11th, I think it was 11th grade. Uh, one of my English teachers, Mrs. Russo, um, it sort of turned my thoughts on to possibly I could be some type of writer or, uh, use creativity, uh, that way. I, uh, so I thought, well, you know, maybe I could do that. So I turned to writing a lot of poems and I wrote short stories and, and, um, did a lot of writing 
And, you know, at that point, then I'm starting to think, well, I got to go to college. What do I want to do at college? You know, and I thought, well, I should maybe I could twist that around and I could do something. I always thought that, you know, the news broad- news broadcasters that were pretty neat. I wanted to actually be a, you know, Patty Barnes or a uh, news broadcaster, some type of uh, Sally Wiggins. I guess those were the two female broadcasters from our Pittsburgh area at the time. And I thought, well, oh, possibly I could do that. I, after more investigation, I realized that, um, you know, that I, that would require me being a field reporter for a while before I could actually be behind the desk and broadcasting the news. And I thought that, um, well, I don't know if I could actually do that. I always thought that the uh, reporters that were out on the beat, that they were sort of intrusive, Uh, into people's lives. And I could not be sticking a microphone into somebody's face at a time whenever they were distraught or, you know, had just suffered some loss or possibly um, been accused of something and trying to find out the news. So um, I wasn't really sure, but I decided that I would still go in that area when I went to college. So At that point, I wasn't really sure if I would go to Pitt or Penn State. Those were two of the biggest schools, and I thought that I would go to one of them. And I, I pretty much for a good portion of my teenage years, I always thought that I would go to Penn State. Um mainly because my father went to Pitt. And not that I wanted to do go completely against him. I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to be me. I didn't want to go to Pitt because my dad went to Pitt. And um, the, the closer it got to me going to school, I flipped. I wanted to go to some place that my dad went to. I wanted us to have something in common. And I, I don't know, I, I thought that it would be really neat to live in Pittsburgh and to be away. I mean, I grew up in small towns, uh, you know, coming from Roscoe, which is pretty small, and then moving to what I thought was the big city in the area of Manesson, which I found out later is very small. I thought that would be something neat to do. So when I went to Pitt, I went into communications. Um, I don't believe that that was the best thing for me to do at that time. Uh, Communications at Pitt at that time was more of like a general uh, degree. There was not specifics. I did go to the radio station at Pitt to see about possibly broadcasting. And I don't know, it just didn't seem like something for me. Although, I mean, I've always been a lover of music. I always thought that, you know, I mean, my parents had the radio playing all the time whenever we were growing up. And my family now laughs at me because I, a song will come on the radio from the 60s and 70s and 80s. And I know almost every word. My sister and I always used to Uh, pick up any pen or uh, wooden spoon or something. And we would always pretend to be, um, you know, well, Donnie and Marie, but I think she was Donnie and I was Marie. I don't know, but that's the, we would always sing and, and pretend like, you know, we were on show, we were on doing some type of show. Uh, So it was, it, it was something that, Music was something that I loved. I just didn't know if I wanted to be uh, a DJ spinning hits and talking in between. So it was a little bit, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So when I, um, you know, I've always had other loves. I've always had, um, you know, I always loved interior decorating. And that was something that I had a, a, a passion for since I was very young. My parents will tell stories about how I would rearrange my bedroom all the time. I, I'd go into my bedroom, shut the door, and they didn't know what I was doing in there. And I was moving the furniture around. I was changing my bedroom around to, you know, make it like a little apartment or uh, just to get a different feel. I'm I'm always willing to do that. I like doing that. I would like to be able to do more now in my house. I don't think that my 
uh, family, my husband and my son, Mark and my sons are very, um, they don't, they don't like that very much. They don't like things to be changed around. They like it to be pretty much status quo all the time. So I don't do it as often as I'd like to do it, but that's something that I always wanted to do because I, uh, had, I was really good in school and, um, I thought that I should go to college and I thought that I should, you, you know, be, do something more. I didn't pursue things like that. I didn't pursue that um, interior design because I didn't know if that would be something that I would be able to make a lot of money at. Uh, the other thing that I I loved, and I don't think I loved it as much as when I was young as I do now is fashion. Um, my, you know, I, when I was growing up, I was more of a tomboy. I was always outside playing with the boys. I was always, you know, um, playing baseball. You know, I was running up and down the neighborhood, riding my bike. I was always outside. I was the, um, typical tomboy girl with t-shirts and jeans and sneakers on all the time even during high school I mean I was a cheerleader so you know I always had sneakers on we were always doing athletic things so I didn't dress up all that much because I wasn't going to wear a dress you know there was one girl in our high school that she wore a dress every single day I mean she always looked to the T every single day <clears throat> excuse me but that was not me I was more of um, still athletic tomboyish type of girl so I wasn't really into fashion at that point my sister Kristen was always into fashion um, she was that was her thing you know she was going to be the fashion person and that's where she went she went to school in New York to the Fashion Institute of Technology and she did work in New York City for a while doing fashion merchandising and um, you know she changed jobs when she moved back to, to the Pittsburgh area but she was always um, more the fashion plate than I was and but I think that the the older that I got, I I like fashion now. I always wear scarves. I think that's why a lot of people at my work think that I have it all together too. Because when I go to work, I try to, you know, be dressed up. I try to have my outfit all together. And um, so that's I think I that's the persona that I play there. Uh, so there were other interests. I didn't always want to be an attorney. I don't. Um, I I like what I do, but I'm not sure. I wish that it, it consumes a lot of my time right now. I wish that there were other projects that I could do, maybe in fashion or maybe in interior design or something like that. I mean, I th that also would require me putting myself out there more. And I'm not always sure that that's something that I'm comfortable with. I, I, I base my, um, I base my actions a lot on what I think other people would think of me. And I know I should probably be a little bit more laid back and uh, not really care about so much about what other people think. But I don't know. I've always been a people pleaser. I always try to please everybody. So, um, you know, that's something that I think that I'm trying to do a little bit more of my, uh, you know, I've heard comments and, and, you know, about, uh, that's all I do is work. I only work, I need to have a hobby. And I, I am grateful for my son, Logan, for saying that stuff to me, because I realize, you know, I, that is all I do. And I do need some other hobbies. And I'm trying to I'm trying to fit them in to my life now. Um, and I applaud Mark for doing something like this. He always wanted to be a news broadcaster too, not a news broadcaster, I think he wanted to be a DJ. So you know, um, you, I'm sure you heard all about market youngers and all of that. Uh, so you know, he he is doing something. He's doing this podcast, which is sort of uh, a little bit of a dream of something that he wanted to do all of his life. I just realized something. I forgot to do this, you know, I should say. And, you know, he wanted to be a, uh, a DJ, you know, market youngers. I, I forgot about the ukulele. I'm not really filling in properly for him today. 
Uh, but uh, so those are some things about me that I think that people think about me, but uh, it's not really who I see that I am. And I just wanted to put that out there. I guess I did put myself out there today. And uh, people could be forming their own opinions about me right now. Uh, you know, I, I, when Mark talked about me, like, why don't you talk about your skincare routine? He says he remembers whenever I was younger. Um, and when we went to, when we graduated from high school, we went to California to visit with his aunt and uncle. And while we were out there, it was sort of nice because I mean, it was an innocent time and we got to learn a lot about each other before, you know, I mean, I think that we knew that we would probably always end up together, but, um, you know, before we, we, I knew we weren't going to live together, but it was sort of like a chance to see each other in the morning and at night before you went to bed and all that kind of stuff. And he said that he remembers me washing my face. And I, at that time, I always used to wash my face with Noxema. I now look back at that and think like, oh gosh, it's probably the worst thing that I could have done for my uh, complexion at that time. But I never really had uh, problems, like a lot of problems with my skin. I was lucky and that way but he said that he remembers me saying that I um I, I never dried my face I wouldn't dry my face I'd just let it air dry and I wouldn't wipe off the the water that was on my face and he was like why don't you do that why don't you wipe off your face and I guess I must have read somewhere in one of my you know uh t- glamour magazines or something like that 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 was like the new thing you know you don't dry your face just let it air dry so that was probably something that I did at that time um but you know I I think that you it, things change over the years you know I I've tried to get into the high-end cosmetics the high-end cleansers and now I'm sort of backing away from that again because I don't think that they're all that they're hyped up to be so you know um I my my routines whatever it is my makeup routine or my um my cleansing routine or things like that are always changing so I just don't really think that that's something that everybody would want to talk about although I I I don't want to brag but I I went in for uh, the hospital for a procedure at one time, you know, um, uh, one of those lovely scoping procedures. And I had no makeup on, of course, which is very rare for me because, you know, growing up in the 80s, um, it was, you didn't leave the house. You didn't leave the house without makeup on. You didn't, um, you know, you went to cheerleading practice. You went to uh, the park, you went to Elks, you always had on makeup because no, you don't want the people to see you without any makeup on. That's just the way it was at that time. And my friends and I were known as the glams. And while that seems like a negative connotation today, it actually wasn't at that time. It was sort of like a compliment because it just meant that we were together all together all the time which is probably why people have that persona about me now. But, um, you know, I, I you just did not not wear makeup. I always look at my beautiful nieces, you know, all of them, and they are so confident in themselves. And they, you know, they were all athletic and they all, you know, would play in games or soccer matches or competitions that they were in. And they didn't wear makeup. They didn't do any of that stuff. And they always look so fresh and clean. And, you know, I sort of wish that it was that way whenever we were younger too, but it wasn't. And, um, but anyhow, back to the procedure that I had, the nurse, I think, she might have been the nurse anesthetist at that time and and you know I'm going in to have this and I'm just not even thinking about anything and she's like ask me my birth date and she was like oh my goodness you're over 50 and I was like yes and she said um I your complexion is so great it's so you hardly have any wrinkles you hardly have anything and you know I'm I'm like I'm sort of taken aback because I wasn't expecting her to say anything like that and I was like thank you and then I started to think about it I mean I look at myself and I can see all of the aging that's going on but I guess it could be worse I'm you know, all the sun sunning that I do. If you know me, you know, I love to be out in the sun. I love to, you know, be outside in the summertime. And um, I I guess you could say that I 
you know, I, I didn't always take care of my complexion and my skin and everything. But I think that the, I have, I do, do think that it has a lot to do with good genes. I mean, you know, my mom and my dad, they both have great skin. And, you know, they're in their 80s now, and they look much younger than 80 years old. Uh, so, you know, like the 60 is the new 80 or something like that. So I guess that I'm really only in my 30s. <laughs> um, I don't think about that. I don't think that that's true. But, um, you know, so I guess that it, 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 you know, there are things about me that I don't really think about. Um, I'm not, a, I don't think that myself, I'm a bragger. So I don't think that I would think that, uh, that I'm all that again, going back to the beginning of this podcast. Um, but you know, I think that I've just, uh, I need to, I'm, I'm, I'm in my fifties and I think that I still need to do things to grow and change and, you know, learn a little bit more about myself and, live my life a little bit for myself and not, I, I, you know, went to, I went to law school. I studied hard. I wanted to get out. I wanted to do really well. I made partner. I'm at that point now where I feel like I've, you know, I've done a lot of things that I wanted to do and, you know, I am in my fifties. So maybe it's time for me to start doing things for myself. So, um, I think that Mark, is not really as sick as he thinks he is today. I think that this was his way of trying to get me to break out and to maybe do something different and uh, put myself out there a little bit more and maybe not worry about so much about what others think of me negatively. Uh, You know, maybe there might be some positive things that come out of this too. And you may have learned a little bit more about me and uh, a little bit more about, I guess, my insecurities. But uh, this that's me. <laughs> uh, so I think that that's about it. I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, this was Right on the Mark with the lovely Kim. And if you wouldn't enjoy this podcast, please, what does he say? Um, subscribe and hit the little bell and give me a thumbs up for... Uh, a like and tune in again for right on the mark with who knows who maybe your host will be. Thanks. Have a great day.